to this play is a BM. Very, this is, a very this is 2018. Game. Who plays BM Hunter in 2018? That's the rogue BM. Apparently the move does. Peekaboo on the assassination rogue is going to be moving in. This should be a lot of pressure for the move. Looks like Growth Silence can be activated very early on on the channels. And the kidney shot. And it looks like a split strategy is actually going to be implemented by the move. And never mind. Jellybean is actually just going to use that stun into a full trap on a Cubsy. Meanwhile, Channel is going to be taking a whole bunch of pressure. Chun Li doing everything he can. And in the last year, as we saw against these teams, Chun Li made Peekaboo's life a living nightmare on that Windwalker mug. All right. I mean, as BM Hunter, all your damage comes from your pets, and those pets get a lot better uptime on an Affliction Warlock, so they know that Channel is slippery. They're trying to get some extra damage from the BM Hunter's pets, but BM Hunter is not the strongest Hunter spec. Its damage is much lower to the advantage of all the damage coming from the pets, so I'm not sure if they're going to have enough damage to push this game over the edge. Right now, Super Frogs are kind of dismantling them defensively and not really finding any openings. Of course, Channel probably one of the most difficult Warlocks to take down. We can see Chun-Li setting up a swap to Absurge, catching him into the leg sweep. No Fists of Fury, however, though, from Chun-Li. Maybe just trying to bait some cooldowns out from Absturge. Not really finding anything off this bait, though. Yeah, Peekaboo has that vendetta coming up in around 25 seconds. They weren't really able to force out anything on Super Frogs at the beginning of that game. Chun Li, known for that very defensive playstyle on the Windwalker Monk, able to peel up for his team when they need it. Now making a swap over onto Absurge, continuing some of that pressure. Chanimals, he just wants to keep dots onto Absurge, rot down kind of everyone. That uh, that uh, for that, Chun Li can sort of bounce around on this map, create pressure on whoever he wants. Chanimals once again going to be porting away out of line of sight as Cubsy is caught into the full trap into the sap. But Peekaboo just can't connect to his target. Yeah, Channel doing an effective job on the Affliction Warlock. Nice shadow step to Jellybeans to try and get back to Channel. Peekaboo reconnects. Cubsy, though, in a good position to just spam heal him up and no crowd control available for Cubsy just yet. Kidney shot used on Channel. Vendetta available. It's likely to be saved to use together with the Bestial Wrath of Jellybeans. Those cooldowns together can be quite devastating. Jellybeans trying to snipe a trap. It's quite difficult as Beastmaster. You don't have the bursting shot to hold the healer in place. So Jellybeans is baiting mobility cooldowns. He's got the Gust of Wind. Now he's looking to try and separate Chun-Li and Cubsy, but it's still quite difficult. He's falling behind the longer that he takes to try and snipe this trap. He snipes it, but one second after the Hex had been completed with that Hex into a fear, Jellybeans also has to trade the aspect of the turtle. And now the move are very far behind. You know, you would think with this composition, the move would have a little bit of pressure, but Channelmos has been sitting pretty this entire game. Super Frogs really haven't had to use anything in terms of defensive cooldowns, just the gateway, just the portal, just good kiting coming in from Channelmos. Meanwhile, Jelly Beans and Peekaboo rotting down to around 50% HP. Touch of Death going to be committed to Jelly Beans. Double Leg Sweep coming in from Chun-Li. Do they have any follow-up CC on the Absur? It doesn't look like it. A little bit of burst coming in from that Touch of Death, but ultimately Jelly Beans will survive. Full Seduce going out now onto Absur. Still crowd controlled up. Jelly Beans tanking this damage with the Earthen Shield totem, but now forced to kite away. Yeah, Spirit Link Totem has been forced out from Absurge. They are surprisingly winning on mana, the move. At least they've got that advantage going for them. Channel gating across the map. Jellybeans and Peekaboo trying to reconnect. Chun-Li supporting with a paralysis. Absurge, though, dipping low. In the meantime, he's recovered. No Spirit Link Totem. No aspect of the turtle. These are vital defensive cooldowns for the move to survive. And now with those out of the way, it's going to be dangerous for them. Channel caught into a kidney shot, but a hex denies follow-up damage from Peekaboo. Channel's going to get out of that stun. He's repositioning in range of his portal. Jellybeans is already disengaging to the portal, predicting it, trying to get the damage that he can get out as much as possible when the portal happens. But Channel isn't falling for it. He's waiting until his healer is crowd controlled. Jellybeans is going to be a bit reluctant to push across the map. Hex on Chun-Li, denies some counter pressure, concussive shot. Jellybeans is going to have a difficult time sniping this trap. He's trying to. He snipes the snare trap, but Jellybeans gets caught in the center of the field. Channel's gets kidney shot, but it's not enough. Chun Li's Fist of Fury looking to close this out. Jellybeans pops the exhilaration. Feign death to remove the dots. Desperately trying to stay alive. He does snipe the trap in the meantime. Pops the Beast of Wrath trying to connect, but he can't. Channel's portals away. Denies it. Gates across the map. The whole time that Cubsy was crowd controlled. And now Jellybeans is exposed still in center field. Yeah, Channels is a monster on that Affliction Warlock, just making any melee very difficult to connect to them. Uh, Channels now into the Shadow Step Kidney Shot. No trinket available for another couple seconds. Does have the unending resolve, but doesn't want to trade it out. This is the Vendetta. Earthen Shield Totem gets dropped by Cubsy. And like you said, Sid, Absurd still has the mana lead. If the move can just hold on a little bit longer, that is a potential win condition moving forward in this game. Channel doing a good job with Cubsy to not overlap defensive cooldowns. Earthen Shield Totem deflected that Vendetta. Now an unending resolve can be used for a more rainy day. Portal back behind the pillar from Channel, and Chun Li does a good job of preventing Peekaboo from immediately getting back by just disable rooting him and paralysising him when he tries to cross the map. Drain Soul Cheeky onto the pets to try and heal himself back up. 
And Jelly Beans is actually playing the Basilisk on her talent. That's a bit all in and, and kind of cheeky. It's not really going to do anything. Channel can just portal away from it. It's a very slow moving pet as it tries to crawl across the map. Absurd is just getting one on one by Chun Li in the back line. Peekaboo trying to set up a game winning play with his blind kidney shot cross crowd control. Jelly Beans in position to trap out of the blind. He lands the full trap. Cubsy opts to trinket. It's going to be misaligned by about eight seconds with that blind, but I'm not sure if it will ultimately matter. Channel is, though, falling behind as finally the damage is starting to ramp up for the move. Yeah, Channels needs to get the port away. He can. Cubs are getting interrupted. Channel still falling low. Still has a Hellstone, still has the Trinket, still has the Unending Resolve, but doesn't want to be too greedy. Ultimately, will trade out the Unending Resolve. Vendetta coming up in five seconds for Peekaboo. This is very good for the move. They can continue this pressure. Cubs, he responds with the Ascendance, trying to top off his teammate before any more crowd control goes out. I hope, I, I don't know how much cardio Channel has been doing in the gym, but he's running miles and miles away from the move in this game. Chun Li setting up a swap. He's been constantly looking for these one on ones to towards Absturge and trying to bait cooldowns or even just look for a kill if Absturge is too greedy. Channel though, is now falling behind as Vendetta gets pulled. This could easily be a Spirit Link totem. Cubsy needs to be careful. He's got no trinket to get out of crowd control. If Jellybeans can snipe in a trap, Channels could fall. Jellybeans is looking for it. He's moving over. Cubsy's getting ready for it. Not falling for the bait. Not using that gust of wind just yet. Jellybeans is forced to retreat away. Disengaging away from Chun-Li. Gets caught in the fist of fury. Kidney shot on Channel. Denies any support from uh, Channel. I really like Peekaboo saving the kidney shots for when Jellybeans gets stunned to deny any backup damage. Chun Li is not going to be able to solo him. So great teamwork there from Peekaboo. Yeah, stun on the Cubsy now as they land the full trap. Channels is all alone, but the fear spams will keep him alive. You can see Chun Li also throwing paralysis on a Peekaboo who did not find any bit of damage during that entire trap. Now Peekaboo looking for the full kidney on Cubsy. Channel crowd control. Channel still could be in some trouble. Trinkets out, trying to kite away the best he can. Cubsy struggling to keep him topped off. He gates away, looking for the healing waves as well. He gusts of wind over to his teammate, trying to get that uh, the heals out. You can see Jelly Beans all over him at this point. Channel is trying to line a sight, but the pets from this Beastmaster Hunter are doing work. I mean, moving into dampening, this is actually looking more favorable for the move. Cubsy or, gets caught into a trap. Nice snipe. Kidney shot. Cross crowd control. No cooldowns for three more seconds. Will Channel fall in that window? He portals out. The line of sight, Peekaboo gets Fist of Fury to away. Cubsy now saves the day, dropping that Earthen Shield totem, protecting Channel and allowing him to survive to another day. You can see Absurge, though, potentially getting swapped over to. He pre-Astral shifts the touch of death. Is he going to get soloed by Chun-Li in the back line? I'm not too sure. He's hanging on by a thread. Chun-Li not finding the kill. Absurge, though, almost tapped on mana. Cubsy still has Spirit Link totem, trading out the trinket there in that crowd control attempt. Wincher on Absurge from Cubsy. Intimidation style into full trap. Nice play from Jelly Beans. Channel in trouble once again. A four second window. He's trying to kite and stall it out. He needs two more seconds. One more second. Spirit Link totem available. Cubsy moves in, but he gates across. They're trying to be greedy and dampening to use that Spirit Link totem for a push later on, but with Dampening mounting up, comes he struggles, he gets counter shot, Jelly Beans leading the charge. Yeah, Channel still rotting down, leg sweep now on Absurge, as Super Frost looking to take him down, but with a pre-Earthen Shield totem, he should be able to survive. Chun Li just trying to create some pressure where he can, but maybe leaving Jelly Beans and Peekaboo alone for this long is not the best idea. Incapacitate on Absurge, Flying Serpent kick in, trying to help out his teammate as the full trap is secured on Cubsy. Channel's getting so low, big heal finally coming in with the Spirit Link totem of Cubsy. That's a big victory for the move. We are at 20% dampening, and this assassination rogue pressure is starting to mount. I see a vendetta coming up in six seconds, and Channel has no trinket. Peekaboo, though, gets swapped to. They're trying to punish him for being so aggressive. Unstable afflictions are being spammed out by Channel. A very powerful damage over time effect. Absurd's caught into a paralysis on his ascendance into the hex. Good denial on that, but no damage to back it up, unfortunately. And Channel is ultimately falling behind and dampening. Eventually, these, these pets that were tickling at the start of the uh, uh, match are going to start sinking their teeth in. Jellybeans is trying to snipe a trap. Channel gates back to Cubsy. They go for the intimidation stun. Jellybeans is looking to snipe the trap. There's no trinket. Vendetta gets popped. They trade out unending resolve. It needs to be enough. Will it be is the question. Ascendance gets popped. Jellybeans has no interrupt. Jellybeans gets feared away by Channel. Succubus played defensive on Peekaboo, trying to desperately just stay alive. A hex now being cast defensively on Peekaboo gets trinketed. Peekaboo just knows that he can find the kill here, and now there's no spear link. Cubsy gets kicked on the heel. Jellybeans trying to lead the aggression once again. Channel portals behind the pillar. Cubsy gets sniped on the trap. Channel in a one on one. Drain solely for his life. Just trying to stay alive. Line of sighting Peekaboo. Chun Li keeping him off his back, but he kidney shots the healer instead. Peekaboo sprinting in. Hellstone! Channel with a greedy play there. Saves it until that last final moment where he had to use it, and it's going to keep him alive. And now they baited Jelly Beans to overextend.
Yeah, Aspect of the Turtle is going to be forced out because of that. That was the touch of death committed by Chun Li, though. Cubsy, in the meantime, also used his trinket on a full blind. So no trinket, no unending resolve. Janimal still low. Uh, so much damage coming in from the move in this situation. 30% dampening. Can they take Peekaboo down with a big swap? He uses the Cloak of Shadows to stay alive. Peekaboo just trying his best to reconnect to Chanimals, but Chun Li making his life a nightmare with the Disable Roots. Now full trap on the Cubsy. Chanimal still has to kite, just trying to avoid Peekaboo at all costs. These Drain Souls from Channel are very effective for him to heal himself up when his healer's crowd controlled. Fist of Fear on Peekaboo, they're trying to punish the overextension. This also forces Peekaboo to use all of his energy on Faint instead of Mutilate for damaging spells. I like the adaptation here to focus down the Rogue instead. Absurd's now getting swapped over to by Chun-Li as he looks for a one-on-one -on -one kill again. And Absurd is really far away from his teammates and his only defensive is Spirit Link and he needs his teammates by his side to use it. They're nowhere to be found. Absurd has to do this all alone. He gets paralysis, Chun-Li rolls over for the swap. Chanimal now falling behind. They're losing the 2v2 in the back line. Full trap, no trigger, and Chanimals is ultimately going to fall to the move. Early on, this looked like the Super Frogs were going to take it, but as we moved into dampening, this still could be potential cross kill. I don't want to count them out just yet. Fist oh. of Fury and Jelly Beans could easily fall. Absurge connects the Spearling Totem, but he's got no mana, Vin. Yeah, he has no mana indeed. Akubzi getting interrupted as they try to create some pressure onto Chun Li. No trinket available into the full kidney shot. This might be what Absurge needs to stabilize, but still, no mana available whatsoever. Chun Li still looking to close out this game, charging in, but Peekaboo being so annoying with the cheap shots, with the Garot Silence. Super, or the move's gonna be working together as a unit to just be running around, sort of bait with out that some fake of the cast. coming in from Chun Li. But a Fist of Fury stun comes in. Absurge manages to shear the hex coming in from Cubsy, but still, Jelly being so low. Cubsy's been trying to get a hex on Absurge this whole time. Uh Oh. Relentless. No trigger, but Chun Li's gonna ultimately fall, leaving the game, not even giving satisfaction to his opponents for the kill. So close, just straight down to the wire between these twos. Jelly Beans makes his debut and gets a win on the board for his team. Unbelievable, bringing in the Beast Mastery Hunter with the Assassination Rogue, and it seemed like they had no pressure in that game until dampening started kicking oh. in. And maybe that's <laughs> what they needed. They needed that dampening for those <laughs> those pets and all those bleeds to start really being super effective against Channels. Yeah, and I think that that's the first game of Beast Master Hunter that we've seen, I think, in spring and, well, all year. So, <laughs> BM Hunter, 100% win rate in tournaments. Good job. Everyone, Jelly, everyone's specking BM now? Yep. <laughs> I, 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 can, I can hear the rear effector just printing them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here's the thing for the move. The move basically has relied on one composition throughout most of this season, and that is the Shadow Priest with the Rogue, with the Shaman. That has been their bread and butter. Now, bringing in this alt composition with Jelly Beans on the Hunter, and uh, it seems like this composition is especially prepared for what Super Frogs uh, has been running in this tournament so far. I don't think they will pick this composition blind, though. I think this is a very very tailored counter comp because they so know too. that the only thing Super Frogs can run that actually beat them was the uh, Windwalker Warlock. So they thought, okay, Chanimals is really good at kiting, but he's not really good at kiting BM Hunter pets and bleeds. So I'm Canadian. That. I know that you can't outrun a bear, Zico. Maybe if you have bear spray. <laughs> <laughs> Still, I could outrun him. <laughs> That's what made it so hard. But Chanimals, like you said, with the Drain Soul, was actually surprisingly self sufficient in that matchup. He did a good job kiting. Uh, but at the end of the day, even if you're doing a good job kiting the Assassination Rogue, he has. A few windows where he's going to hit you. He can shadow step kidney shot you. Then he also has the sprint as well as the vanish and the cloak where he can try to make a move despite how annoying Chun Li was being. Yeah, and that's what you gotta make count. You gotta make it count when you go for the step kidney on Chanimals. You gotta get all of your bleeds up. You gotta make sure that you have some kind of crowd control going on on App Sturge so you can build up that pressure. And when you do that in dampening, even if Chanimals doesn't die during the crowd control chain, he's still gonna be on like 50% or 60% next time uh, they manage to land that trap and uh, the difficult thing about it is really having um, the jelly beans manage to land his freezing traps because he's not playing with a sub rogue that can just stun up the healer for him or a feral druid or anything like that so he has to use the intimidation and when it's on a cooldown because it's a one minute cooldown he has to still try to snipe them onto um, absturge and he did a really good job in that matchup the thing is super frogs is not a one trick pony Sid, what do you think they could be running or what do you think they could be thinking to run uh, in the next matchup i don't think we're going to see bm hunter blind pick again yeah, I think you're right. I think that was just a surprise pick to try and put a point on the board and potential counter comp when they know that what's coming. So now Super Frogs, I think, are going to change their composition. Maybe well, it probably depends on what the move's going to be running. 
Mm, yeah, I mean, they, they likely switch RPS. I think in this position, RPS is probably their pick, so we see Super Frogs play Windwalker Lock Shaman again, but then moving to the next game, I think Super Frogs blind lock something that is different than Windwalker Lock. What it is, maybe a mage composition? Um, or just a rogue, switch over from Windwalker to a rogue or something like that. We've seen them play Rogue Warlock. That could be better for them aggressively. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's still kind of on the table because I don't know what's up with North America, but they're just like, hey, you know that spec that everyone says is kind of bad, no one really wants to play? Why don't we play it? Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's play it. Oh, it worked. Okay. That's an <laughs> EU thing, we're, too. We're playing it now. Let's really? Yeah. I feel like it's not as much. Outlaw? Okay, well. <laughs> okay, well, I guess. Checkmates it. A, bi a bit. <laughs> it, it, it depends. We had Outlaw. We, we've had it for a while. It's just that... Fury Warrior? It's it, Well, yeah, but people pick it up. Like, one guy picks it up and does well with it, and then it takes a while to convince everyone else, and then the Rero Factory gets all the fuel it needs to start printing out those pirates and <laughs> making those ships and how, sending them all to the docks. How, how, many, think, how many people do you think are going to be re-rolling to BM Hunter after that game? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not convinced very many, to be I'm honest. I'm not convinced yet. But it is interesting to see them pick a spec that normally isn't played just for this specific counter comp, basically. Yeah. It's like they, it's they, a smart strategy. Yeah, they know Channels is going to be kiting. Hard to kite the pets. So you have the pets, you have the bleeds, you have the, you know, the, the poisons really doing work on Channels, even when he is doing such a good job kiting. And you can see um, the move, they're going to be choosing Tolveron Arena, so a large map. Um, actually, Super Frogs is going to be choosing a very large map. Uh, do you think that's telling us to what they are trying to set up here? I mean, they uh, are they are a wizard-based comp, so likely something that's focusing on defense. Yeah, probably. Uh, some maybe I think Ch uh, Channelmon is still going to be in the game. So some warlock-based comp. You have longer distance to travel with the gate. But I think the interesting thing here is what the move picks. Uh, we can assume RPS, but which RPS? Because we've seen them play sub, we've seen them play assassination, and we've seen them uh, play outlaw. And, Ooh! Uh, there it is! Have we actually seen outlaw RPS from them in a tournament? Yes, don't you remember? Oh, no. Actually, I, 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 I know why you don't remember. The game lasted about five seconds, and Dilly just got deleted. Okay, maybe. Thanks for the refresher. So the move going to be bringing in the outlaw rogue we were talking about, taking a page from Europe. Um, it's been a super effective specialization for the rogue. And now the move can sort of go back to their bread and butter composition, that RPS, Super Frogs. Now, they haven't actually tried out the Windwalker Affliction against the Outlaw Rogue, so I'm curious to see, and they, they are, they're going to lock it in. I mean, it's, it's basically working. a mirror, but one team has a better Windwalker. <laughs> well, there's uh, the Shadow Priest versus the Warlock, too. It's like a better Warlock. No, I'm kidding. So you're saying, <laughs> so you're saying can I quote you as saying the move should win this one? Um... They got yeah. the better Windwalker it, and it, the it, better it, Lock. <laughs> it depends, honestly, how uh, well Peekaboo plays the Outlaw because we have seen him play it. I think he's played it two games uh, so far this season, but uh, it's been very uh, short games, and it's also been against a team that, you know, they're farming no matter what spec. So mm. uh, I'm pretty sure Peekaboo can join just without talents and still win that uh, against the, against Casca's Angels. Oh, okay. No shots fired, I'm sure. Uh, I don't but know, just it's just K against <laughs> Hunters. Yeah. It, it's, uh, he feeds on them, you know? It's, it's what he does. And the funny thing is Dilly knows it, too. Yeah. Sending out tweets. <laughs> don't hurt me, WizK. <laughs> WizK, please, please stop. <laughs> not, not the belt. Yeah, they seem to always get them, but this should be an interesting matchup. Like we said, this isn't something we've seen so far. In the past, the move is run the, with the Assassination Rogue, and it seemed like Super Frogs had really found the answer for that. Now locking in blind, the move, uh, bringing in that Outlaw Rogue on a very large map. Uh, how do you feel like this map is really going to play out? Do you think any team really has an advantage? I guess with the super long gateway, the channel is going to be able to kite? Uh, we, we say the Shadow Priest and the Outlaw Rogue are better Windwalkers, are better locks. In damage, I would agree. In mobility, I would disagree. So at least on the big map, they will have the mobility advantage. Channel can portal gate across the universe. Chun-Li can also portal and then flying serpent kick across the universe. So I think Super Frogs will focus on a strategy that avoids just stay away from whiz k like i don't know maybe he smells kind of bad they just don't want to be near him that's the strategy just get away from the shadow priest run in a circle and avoid him as long as possible then maybe later into dampening look for a swap to absurge and burst him down i don't I, think he smells too bad no, he probably doesn't <laughs> that was just a joke i think that the the, the the problem with super frogs here is that they want to get that that rock pressure going and peekaboo he's going to be able to cloak off those hots and i mean those dots and also heal for each uh, debuff that he removes so uh, outlaw rogue is very very good at going to dampening 
Yeah, and it seems that last week was not convincing for you guys in Twitch chat. Superfrog is actually down 26% of you think they're going to win. The move, obviously, up 1-0. 74% of you think they are going to win this year. We'll have to see Peekaboo opening up on a Channimals right away with Spelllock over on a WizK. It's going to be very important that Superfrog locks down some of this damage that WizK is able to put out with those VTs. All right, Peekaboo setting up a swap to Chun-Li, trying to burst him down. Peekaboo all over the place. He must have got a compass buff on that roll early on. Looking for a swap to Cubsy. Gets gouged into a cheap shot. Peekaboo trying to get a solo killer. Bait a trinket. Silence now. Hellstone from Cubsy will allow him to survive, but that still was not the plunder armor. In the meantime, though, WizK has had to use dispersion. Cubsy is also falling so far behind, trying to get the kills. Peekaboo now pulling back to save his Shadow Priest, realizing he cannot afford to stay off of Channimal that long, or Chun-Li needs to support him with the stuns. WizK now loading up everyone with dots. Yep, Peekaboo uh, leaps over onto Channimals, but Channimals immediately ports away. There's another stun coming in from Peekaboo, giving WizK an opportunity to finally get out some damage, but Chun-Li, you can see he's all over Absurge at this point in the game, wants to find some damage onto him, make a potential swap on a WizK, who doesn't have the dispersion a little bit later on. Now a nice little swap over onto Chun-Li as he dips low as well. Cubs, he's there, but a full fear coming in. The touch of Karma is forced out, and I like this from the move, really punishing Chun-Li for getting that aggressive. Yeah, Absurge sneaking into Hex, into a full Ooh. sap from Peekaboo. He's styling on the frogs. Now into a stun, a potential swap plunder armor onto Cubsy. Trying to maybe bait a trinket. Tricks of the trade, silence. Unfortunately, not going to be. I think it was overlapped a bit with the stun. So Cubsy actually gets away with not having to trinket during the plunder armor. That's a critical move for Cubsy. He can now use trinket on blind. We see Peekaboo making another swap. Shadow Crash, Void Form. Tons of damage from WizK. Gets paralysis on the Void Torrent. Great play from Chun Li, denying that torrent. Channel now gating away to safety. But then they swap to Chun Li. Peekaboo all over the place. Yeah, Peekaboo is doing a phenomenal job in this matchup. Now a stun over onto Cubsy as well. Just putting pressure everywhere, allowing WizK to get out so much damage. But UA Sans on apps are genuine incapacitate. Wizk into the Fist of Fear. done a little bit of pressure there. Chun-Li looks for the DR to incapacitate as well. But apps are out of the crowd control. Should be able to top off Wizk in this situation. Back and forth pressure for both teams. Peekaboo making another swap to Channel. Silence on Cubsy. Channel portals away. Peekaboo in hot pursuit. Stunning up Channel behind the pillar. <laughs> Now Cubsy has to deal with a kick. He gets gouged away. Kick onto the Fear of Channel. Peekaboo taking the team in complete control. Now into the stun onto Cubsy. But he line of sights the Fear. Peekaboo just styling on the Super Frogs. Chun Li is forced to pull back to Fists of Fury. Peekaboo get this menacing rogue off of his team. But now Chun Li is stunned up. Peekaboo switches his attention. Tricks of the trade. Wizk loading up with dots. Unfortunately, his void form has just concluded. His damage is going to need a couple more seconds to ramp up. Yep, Peekaboo. Stun on Channel. Stun on Cubsy. Stun on Chun Li. Just stunning everyone. Now Channel's into the between the eyes stun as well. And that it really is the power of that outlaw rogue. You have so many ranged stuns. You can make swaps all over the place. Stun now over on the Cubsy, putting a little bit of pressure over onto him. Fear on the Channimals as well as WizK pushes in, looking for the BT. Gets interrupted by Channimals. Good job by him slowing down some of that damage. That could have been disastrous for Cubsy. He can be just crowd controlling Cubsy. This looks like a nightmare. He's finally going to get it. He gets blind. He trinkets. Is there anything to stop? No. Uh, gouge? Uh, I don't believe they have a stun DR just yet, but they got the trinket. Now a swap over to WizK. He uses his trinket as well as he's trying to build up some pressure on Channel. Silence on Cubsy. Channel portals back out of the line of sight. Peekaboo stuns up Chun-Li. Goes for a vanish. Maybe looking for a hex now onto Cubsy. Cheap shot for Channel. Potential stun DR for Cubsy. They could swap to him with plunder armor. They could just KO Cubsy. Absurd's getting swapped to by Chun-Li as Chun-Li's trying to make something happen for his team. There's the stun. Potential plunder armor with no trinket. He's opting not to go for it. Potentially didn't have the compass buff. That would have been the moment to pull the trigger. I feel like uh, Earthen Shield Totem might have been preemptively used there. He wanted to save it. Now there's no totem and no trinket. Cubsy could be in trouble with his entire team at 50% health. Yeah, Cubsy's going to be in a lot of trouble now. Stun over onto Channel. Big pressure. He trinkets out. He ports away. Kick now onto Cubsy. Peekaboo still just playing point guard for his team, charging in, putting out a lot of pressure. Cubsy now finally get out, able to get out some heals with that Ascendance. Now into the full stun. Peekaboo actually used the plunder armor there on Channels, I believe, forcing out that trinket. Now a swap over onto Cubsy with silence. He gates away. Nice gateway positioning there by Channimals, allowing him a little bit of room to breathe as Chun-Li gets swapped to. Yeah, Chun-Li getting stunned up. Peekaboo going back onto the healer, Cubsy, with kick, gouge, and stun. It is quite annoying to get a cast off, and Cubsy's having a difficult time even getting himself back to full health. Peekaboo going for a cheeky vanish, a sap at the end of the cat. I'm not entirely sure if he did drop comma there. Triple fear, though. Gets secured. Cubsy gets feared uh -oh. away. Now Chun-Li in trouble. Peekaboo getting caught, though. Overextended. 
He's styling a little bit too much. He's forced to trade out the repost. Now making a swap over to Channel. Unending resolve available. But Channel just portals back behind the pillar. Mana quite even despite Peekaboo walking all over Super Frogs. Yeah, Peekaboo puts Cubs in the, the full stun. Channel to flex it with the full fear though. Very nicely done. Whiskey in void form, looking to get a little bit of pressure out. He's in the void torrent now. Full silence on a Cubsy, but he drops the Earthen Shield totem and he's positioning very smartly on the outside of that just to get a little bit of damage reduction. Cubsy should be fine in this situation. Full kick going to be secured there by Peekaboo as well. As you can see, App Surge for the first time going to be pushing in on top of Cubsy, trying to keep his team super aggressive in this situation. They have such a momentum swing right now as Cubsy's dipping lower and lower. He has the Trinket, he has the Spirit Link, but he gets fully blinded. Trinket's out of that, and now Cubs is going to be a lot of trouble when that Plunder Armor comes up in around 30 seconds for Peekaboo. Yeah, Plunder Armor is going to be the KO button for Peekaboo to take down Cubsy with no Trinket having used it on that blind. I, I can't really blame him. He was so low that if he sat it, they could have just killed him out of it. Channel trying to just avoid Peekaboo, fearing him away. Whiskey moves in, lands a double fear. Now the Void Form has been activated. This is going to be a massive increased damage for Whiskey. He gets access to the ability Void Bolt, which is just more instant damage. Shadow Crash hits huge on Channel. Chun Li trying to peel Whiskey away, denying this Void Form pressure, but will he deny it long enough? He's still uh -oh. got a little bit of power left in him. Tons of damage. Channel trades out unending resolve to deal with the Plunder Armor. Peekaboo not looking for a swap, trying to find an opening on the Warlock instead. But in the meantime, Cubsy snuck in a hex on Absurge, putting him quite behind with both himself and Whiskey at 50%. Chun Li rolls over first. Yeah, big pressure on Absurge. He, he uses the uh, Astral Shift in order to keep himself alive. Peekaboo now looking for some more pressure on Channels. Keep in mind, if the game does go this far, that Channels will not have his unending resolve for the next Plunder Armor. So in a minute and a half, that is an opportunity for the move to get some pressure. Channels still not getting topped off. Cubsy struggling to find the heals. He leaps over into the gateway, positioning very far away. And now for the first time, Super Frog is going to have a moment Whoa. to breathe. But Peekaboo just all over Shadow him. Shadow Crash immediately swapping over onto Cubsy. He gets stunned into the gouge, potentially into the silence. Whiskey getting low in the meantime, though. Well done by Chun-Li, forcing Whiskey into that dispersion and play a little bit defensive. Yeah, Chun Li trying to disrupt the team as much as Peekaboo, but finding a cooldown there finally from Whiskey. Potential opening moving forward to kill him in a stun lock. Touch of Death has been committed as Chun Li goes for a solo one on one with Absurge. It's been Absurge versus Chun Li this entire series. He's managed to escape to safety though with a nice psychic scream, fearing Chun Li away. Gouge on Channel trying to slow down the pressure. Cubsy, despite his team getting like completely controlled by Peekaboo, has maintained a significant mana lead, but silence into stun. No trinkets available. Could easily close the game. Tons of damage as Chun-Li gets caught out in center field. No trinket available, and the move will now lead the series 2-0. to oh. Yeah, normally we see Chun-Li able to get off those super greedy plays where he can be all over Absurge. I like what the move did in that matchup, really punishing that aggressive play with that surprise swap on him, and now the move up 2-0 to zero in the series. Yeah, the move is looking like they are unstoppable. They have picked up a couple of comps. They secured the blind pick with that counter comp that they have, and now it looks like the outlaw version of the RPS as well is doing really well into that Windwalker Lock Shaman. Uh, the, oh, the one thing Super Frogs had going was that mana lead, but I mean, when you look at cooldowns, there was a lot of uh, uh, cooldowns being forced from the move, and also there was a lot of opportunities for uh, the move to actually kill. A little bit better plunder usage from Peekaboo could have uh, potentially netted them a kill a long time ago because they forced Cubsy to trinket those blinds, and if they could find a swap later on at some point with that plunder, they could definitely take him down in a stun, stun, silence combo or something like that. Yeah, and that was just a really nice setup coming in from the move the last few moments of that game with the silence, with the stuns, really not too much Super Frogs could have really have done. And now for Super Frogs, what do you do? I mean, you, you thought you found out a composition for the move, and it, I mean, it kind of worked out. It wasn't the most one-sided matchup, but do you think that that's what they're going to be walking into in game number three? Uh, I mean, what, what else can they do? They've tried Warrior Warlock Shaman. That didn't work out. There's obviously Chun-Li's alt as well. It seems like they're locked in with Channel as kind of the carry for the team, but Outlaw Rogue does so well into Warlock in general. We've seen in the European region. I mean, Walrix is, I don't know what his win rate is exactly, but it seems like he almost can never take a game even off of the Outlaw Rogues on the Warlock. So maybe it is time for Channel to maybe step off to the side. Maybe they switch to the Windwalker Death Knight. They played that once uh, the la in the last cup to try and deal with the RPS. It didn't work out, but if they could polish it up, we've seen Method Orange take games with the Windwalker Death Knight, so it's still an option on the table. Yeah, it definitely is, but it's nice to see that the move has really prepared. These guys put in a lot of practice. They've been taking this very seriously, and that's why they are that number one seed moving into this tournament, and they're positioning themselves quite nicely in this series and in this tournament to potentially be the ultimate point earners for North America throughout the summer season.
Yeah, and being that first seed, it guarantees that you're going to be fighting against the four seed, I believe, of Europe, which is XRB. So if they want that matchup, which I'm not sure if they do, I feel like a, a really strong debiting resto druid might be a little bit difficult for them. But regardless, they're the highest point earner, so I think it's almost impossible for them to lose that lead. It does seem like that's going to be the matchup that they will find themselves in in the summer finals, having already qualified and likely to be the highest point earners, unless somebody can stand up to them. Well, I, I was thinking when you said that, I, I think Peekaboo on the Outlaw Rogue is probably going to be a formal yeah. opponent for XRB and that really for XRB in the European scene has been their kryptonite it has been that outlaw road they have not figured out a way to beat it so maybe that is the matchup that they do want but uh, at this point uh, Super Frogs, they are going to be able to select whatever map they want. They've already removed the biggest map in the pool. I think it's likely they go somewhere like Tiger's Peak, probably has good movement with the gateway and stuff like that. Tiger's Peak, Asher Mains, something like that one of the more standard maps that doesn't really favor anyone too much. Uh, I think it sounds reasonable. Uh, oh, unreasonable. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's unreasonable. And maybe this uh, alludes to them playing the Windwalker Death Knight setup. Dalaran Sewers, a little bit smaller, so, uh, you know, if the move, they end up blocking in that same thing. Maybe Super Frogs goes for the Windwalker Death Knight play, but I don't know. The move seems like they know how to handle that quite well. Yeah, we've seen the move take down a lot of... Uh, uh, double melees essentially warrior cleaves and windwalker dk's and all that uh, with their rps so i mean if there's any shadow priest is going to survive that it's going to be whiz k but uh, i think uh, it's going to be interesting to see does the move blind lock uh, outlaw rogue again i think that the map has maybe made them second guess it because usually we see a team just insta lock in what they want within the blind right and now they're, they're taking their time yeah Maybe just don't want to give Super Frogs what they want. Maybe just waiting, just playing a little bit of a mind game or something like that. But yeah, like you said, the move, normally we see the Shadow Priest Shaman composition get destroyed by those double melee setups, but it really is the synergy between WizK and Absurge that makes them so successful. They're one of the only successful Shadow Priest Shaman teams we've really seen in the tournament scene so far. I mean, WizK was the only one to keep playing it. And I guess when you've played maybe, I, I don't know, his actual... Billion. Okay, millions of Shadow Priest games. Billions. <laughs> you You eventually <laughs> can deal with what would normally be the counter. And it looks like they're actually going to be throwing a curveball at the Super it's Frog. Survival. survival. It's subtlety. This is actually a scary comp. Damn. This is actually a very scary comp. It does a ton of damage. Yeah. You think the move's showing off at this point? Showing that they can square dance and two-step huh? and, you know... Bust to move all over the Jelly place. Jellybeans just got bored. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I think Jellybeans just got bored. He's like, I want to play this tournament at least one time, guys. Can I? I mean, we qualify. Think that's Let it? me play, please. I, I, I think it comes down to Jellybeans just being like, okay, you know, we've I've won a few games as MM already. Let's win a game with BM and win a game with Survival as well to prove that Hunters are just fine right now. <laughs> hunters are fine, yeah. Super Frogs, they, they got to be second guessing themselves. And that's one of the advantages you have when you play all these different compositions you have available. You constantly are keeping your opponents guessing. Now, Super Frogs, do they say, Okay, well, maybe we try the Windwalker, Lock Shaman again, or are they going to switch it up? Because honestly, in game number one, it didn't look too bad for Super Frogs. They started falling behind as dampening got higher and higher, but they did have moments of life. I think the map is, would be bad for a Warlock. I almost uh, yeah. want them to play Windwalker Death Knight into this. That's scary for the Death Knight, is it? I think, too. I think. I don't know. Uh, this comp is definitely <laughs> scary for an Affliction Warlock, and on Dalaran Sewers, that's going to be scary because Jelly Beans, of course, with the Explosive Trap, has a lot of ranged damage as well, and Peekaboo on the Sub Rogue, we already I talked about it a little bit earlier, that the Sub Rogue is so good at uh, using small maps to get those CCs, and it is the Windwalker Lock Shaman again. Yeah, and Peekaboo on the Sub Rogue also, keep in mind, is going to be able to help Jelly Beans land those traps, basically on DR. Normally, right, we see right. the Subtlety Rogue set up the Frost Mage for the Polymorphs. Now he's going to be able to set up Jelly Beans for the traps. They're going to get those traps. Yeah, the Palm Polymorphs, the traps. <laughs> uh, but they're going to be uh, getting that crowd control on DR. Uh, have a lot of pressure on channels. We'll have to see if Super Frogs can respond appropriately. I think it was back in 2014, Peekaboo and Jelly Beans were playing together as Hunter Rogue in that regional tournament. They didn't make it out, but from there they built up their status Power really as teamwork and friendship. Yeah, they've they've built up their status in the World of Warcraft community to now where they're winning these events, highest point earners, and it's been a long road for them. But those two guys together in particular are definitely a dynamic duo, and I think they're going to showcase a very spectacular game here because Survival Hunter, you might say, oh, well, it's not that great. It's okay, but you pair with the Salty Rogue, it does a ton of burst damage, and if you're not careful, you're going to get wiped off the floor. Wiped off the floor indeed, and we'll have to see if Super Frogs can handle that kind of pressure in this matchup. It's going to be interesting to see.
we expect Chanimals to be uh, really put to the test here. You know, he's done a good job in these previous matchups with this kiting, with the portal, with the gateway. Uh, but it can be hard when you're caught into the stuns, uh, you know, of a subtlety rogue. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to line up sight the, uh, the subtlety rogue. He's going to have to keep max range as well uh, from Cubsy. And uh, it's going to be up to Peekaboo to kind of lead the uh, the pace here for the game and set Jelly Beans up to get those traps and uh, to stun lock Chanimal and allow Jelly Beans to get that aspect of the eagle off and all that big survival hunter damage. Yeah, both these teams have already guaranteed their spots at the Summer Finals, but there's a lot on the line. There's prize money, there's pride, as well as those precious points. So moving forward into game number three, Super Frogs is going to have to find a way to stay alive. All right, Jelly Beans is staying in the pipe with Abster, so Peekaboo can sneak in and get a sap. That's good positioning from the move. They get guaranteed crowd control as Peekaboo looks to control the entire team. Jelly Beans now moving in, setting up for a swap on Cubsy, but he's able to sneak in Astral Shift between the stun lock. That little bit of a misplay from Peekaboo allows Cubsy to sneak away very easily. Yeah, I think it might have actually been Chun Li breaking up that stun lock, so well done by him. They make a swap over onto the Windwalker Monk. Chun Li could be in a little bit of trouble, but they managed to get the Earthen Shield Totem out from uh, Absurge in that situation. Chun Li still rotting down low with the full blind on to Cubsy. Is he going to trink it out? Kidney shot on Chanimals. He trinkets out. Chun Li all alone. Chanimals has to trinket to keep him alive. Cubsy ultimately trinkets out as well. Now full seduce over on Absurge into the cap stun. Big pressure coming in from Super Frogs onto Peekaboo. Has the evasion, has the cloak of shadows, but going to play it greedy and keep those for a rainy day. Ascendance used from Absurge as well as Healing Tide. Those are three minute cooldowns. Absurge isn't going to have those to top his team off for quite some time, having overlapped them together. In the meantime, Peekaboo setting up a crowd control chain. Chanimal, Kai. Jelly Beans not able to connect. Peekaboo will, however. Cubsy out of crowd control now. Justin wins into line of sight. Gets the Earth Shield reapplied to Chanimal. Setting up for some big healing. Smoke bomb to interrupt the heal. Nice smoke bomb play from Peekaboo. Punishing the trinket earlier on, but surprisingly not forcing an unending resolve from Chanimal. A bit greedy, but he gets away with it. Shadow step kick. Triple Inferno, though, from Chanimal. And here comes the Lord of Damage. Is almost a triple kill is impending. The dot damage is mounting up. And because Absurd used those three-minute cooldowns earlier, he has to manually single target every target back to he gets himself. He's still got two more to go. Yep, Peekaboo looking for a little bit of damage, but he's scared. He doesn't want to push in. There's a full trap on Cubsy. Can they find the stun? Chanimals preemptively ports away. Very nicely done, but now caught into the full cheap shot. Do they have the pressure to take him down? Still has the unending resolve. Chun Li flailing with the Fist of Furies to keep his team alive. Absurd now into the full fear. Jelly Beans and Peekaboo going to be in trouble. Peekaboo does not have a single defensive cooldown left. Cubsy gets interrupted. Chanimals hovering around 50% HP, but Peekaboo is the one that is ultimately scared. Yeah, I mean, Jelly Beans has to use the aspect of the turtle, and the pressure is now mounting. There's rotting behind the pillar. Chanimal just killing the entire team. Chun Li, a menace, but overextended, trying to punish it, but a spell lock on Absurge. The entire team rotting down. They need to try and kill Chun Li in the stun lock, but he pre walled it, taking almost absolutely no damage. Nice play. Chanimal now overextending, though. Paralysis on Absurge. Chun Li trying to make a swap. Jelly Beans and Peekaboo kiting away from him. Good kiting. Chanimal still low. Cubsy not in line of sight. Chanimal actually line of sighting Cubsy, trying to portal away. Jelly Beans falling behind, getting disabled it away. Chun Li now switching to Absturge, trying to force some pressure there. Full stun. Is there a full trap? Full trap sniped out by Cubsy, but Peekaboo gets caught with no trinket. It's a race. Chanimal and Peekaboo both dangerously low. Who is going to fall first? It looks like Peekaboo is going to be the one with the nice this play on after It gets interrupted, though. He saps Cubsy. Peekaboo is still just so digital. He connects one heal, but Jelly Beans is now low. A fear on the into a hex. Super Frogs are looking to close this. They need just the tiniest bit more damage, but they don't have it. Absurge sustains the team with the Spirit Link Totem. Yeah, but look at Super Frogs. Everyone is 100% HP. Chun Li still has a touch of karma. Going to be making a swap on Absurge with the Fist of Fury stun. Peekaboo trying to peel that up with the cheap shots. Absurds managed to get off the Astral Shift. The Urge and then Shield Totem. Chanimal's now going to be pushing in to continue this dot pressure. You can Aww. see Super Frogs wants to close out this game. Peekaboo uses the Cloak of Shadows. Do they have any pressure? There's a kidney shot on Cubsy as they make a swap onto Chun Li, putting a little pressure there. He has the trinket. He has a touch of karma. Manages to get it off and stay alive a little bit longer. And Cubsy has trinket spare link totem. I would love to just see the Super Frogs just run over the move right now. They've got the defensive cooldowns to trade out to survive. They just need momentum. Absurge doesn't have any recovery for 14 more seconds. Absurge is just praying that his team can stay alive for 10 more seconds. When he gets that ascendance, he can immediately top his team, and it looks like he's going to be able to get that time. Five more seconds. Double leg sweep, though. Chun Li trying to set up. Cubsy at the same time. Caught into a kidney shot. Chanimal sitting right uh -oh, on top Chun -Li. of Cubsy, But Chun Li gets swapped to. He used the trigger touch of karma. Cubsy used his trigger earlier, oh! and he can't get out of it. The move are going to walk away. 3-0, despite almost all 
all three members going down at the same time. They hang on to the bitter end to find a kill and advance in the upper bracket. Yeah, Absurge really showing why he is one of the best shamans in North America, if not the best shaman. So excellently done there by the move, closing out that series three to zero. I think a lot of that came down to Cubsy trinketing the blind. Yeah. You know, standard play, you trinket the blind, then you, well, you know you have it for the next blind. But unfortunately, they weren't going to last that long, and he didn't have the trinket link for Chun Li. Exactly, and the, the problem here is usually you want to trinket the blind, but when your Windwalker has used his trinket touch of karma on the setup that is the blind, then you should not trinket that blind because your Windwalker is on stun DR, your Windwalker has incapacitate and two stuns, so he can shut down that sap, and you can sit that blind. You will have your trinket for this trap right here, and you have your spirit link available as well. So definitely gonna be able to save Chun Li here, and then of course in the next setup you might still lose, but at least you make it to that point. So defensive overlap from um, Super Frogs is gonna cost them that one. Yeah, and they will be sent down to the lower.